Chapter 14 Stories of the Beginning and the Multidimensional God As the present life of any individual rises from hidden dimensions beyond those easily accessible in physical terms, and as it draws its energy and power to act from unconscious sources, so does the present physical universe as you know it rise from other dimensions. So does it have its source and derive its energy from deeper realities. History, as you know it, represents but one single light upon which you focus. You interpret the events that you see therein, and you project upon its glimmer your interpretations of events that may occur. So entranced is your concentration that when you wonder about the nature of reality, you automatically confine your question to this one small flickering moment that you call physical reality. When you ponder upon the aspects of God, you unthinkingly speak of the creator of that one light, that light is unique, and if you truly understand what it was, you would indeed understand the nature of true reality. History, as you think of it, represents but one thin line of probabilities in which you are presently immersed. It does not represent the entire lifetime of your species or the catalog of physical activities, or begin to tell you the story of physical creatures, their civilizations, wars, joys, technologies, and triumphs. Reality is far more diverse far richer and unutterable than you can presently suppose or comprehend. Evolution, as you think of it, and as it is categorized by your scientists, represents but one probable line of evolution, the one in which, again, you are presently immersed. There are, therefore, many other equally valid, equally real evolutionary developments that have occurred and are occurring and will occur, all within other probable systems of physical reality. The diverse, endless possibilities of development possible could never appear within one slender framework of reality. With splendid innocence and exuberant pride, you imagine that the evolutionary system as you know it is the only one, that physically there can be no more. Now, within the physical reality that you know, there are hints and clues as to the nature of other physical realities. There are, latent within your own physical forms, other senses, unused, that could have come to the front in your probability, but did not. Now, I have been speaking of earthly developments, realities therefore clustered about earthly aspects as you know them. No evolutionary line is a dead one. Therefore, if in your system it disappears, it emerges within another. All probable materializations of life and consciousness have their day, and create those conditions within which they can flourish, and their day, in your terms, is eternal. I am speaking now in this chapter mainly about your own planet and solar system, but the same applies to all aspects of your physical universe. You are aware, then, of only one specific, delicately balanced, but unique portion of physical existence. You are not only creatures of corporeal being, forming images of flesh and blood, embedded in a particular kind of space and time. You are also creatures rising out of a particularized dimension of probabilities, born from dimensions of actuality, richly suited to your own development, enrichment, and growth. If you have any intuitive understanding as yet concerning the nature of the entity or whole self, you will see that it has placed you in a position in which certain abilities, insights, and experience can be realized, and in which your unique kind of consciousness can be nurtured. Your slightest experience has far more repercussions within this multidimensional environment than the physical brain can conceive. For if you are intensely preoccupied with what may seem to be one infinitesimally minute aspect of reality, and while you seem to be completely embedded within it, only the most quote-unquote surface elements of the self are so entranced. I do not like the term surface in this regard, though I have used it to suggest the multitudinous portions of the self that are otherwise engaged, some of them as entranced in their reality as you are in yours. The entity, the true multidimensional self, is aware of all of its experiences, and this knowledge is, to some extent, available to these other portions of the self, including, of course, the physical self as you know it. These various portions of the self, in fact, will eventually, in your terms, become fully aware. This awareness will automatically alter what now seems to be their nature, and add to the multiplicitude of existence. Now, there are many probable systems of reality, therefore, in which physical data predominates, but such physical probabilities represent but one small portion. Each of you also exist in non-physical systems, and I have explained earlier that your slightest thought or emotion is manifested in many other ways than in your own field of existence. 
Only a portion of your entire identity is quote-unquote presently familiar to you, as you know. Therefore, when you consider the question of a supreme being, you imagine a male personality with those abilities that you yourselves possess, with great emphasis upon qualities you admire. This imagined God has therefore changed throughout your centuries, mirroring man's shifting ideas of himself. God was seen as cruel and powerful when man believed that these were desirable characteristics, needed particularly in his battle for physical survival. He projected these upon his idea of a God because he envied them and feared them. You have cast your idea of God, therefore, in your own image. In a reality that is inconceivably multidimensional, the old concepts of God are relatively meaningless. Even the term, a supreme being, is in itself distortive, for you naturally project the qualities of human nature upon it. If I told you that God was an idea, you would not understand what I meant, for you do not understand the dimensions in which an idea has its reality, or the energy that it can originate and propel. You do not believe in ideas in the same way that you believe in physical objects. So if I tell you that God is an idea, you will misinterpret this to mean that God is less than real, nebulous, without reality, without purpose, and without mode of action. Now, your own physical image is the materialization of your idea of yourself within the properties of matter. Without the idea of yourself, your physical image would not be, yet often it is all you are aware of. The initial power and energy of that idea of yourself keeps your image alive. Ideas, then, are far more important than you realize. If you will try to accept the idea that your own existence is multidimensional, that you dwell within the medium of infinite probabilities, then you may catch a slight glimpse of the reality that is behind the word God, and you may understand why it is almost impossible to capture a true understanding of that concept in words. God, therefore, is first of all a creator, not of one physical universe, but of an infinite variety of probable existences, far more vast than those aspects of the physical universe with which your scientists are familiar. He did not simply then send a son to live and die on one small planet. He is a part of all probabilities. There have been parables told and stories of beginnings. All of these have been attempts to transmit knowledge in as simple terms as possible. Often answers were given to questions that literally have no meaning outside of your own system of reality. For example, there was no beginning and there will be no end, yet parables have been given telling you of beginnings and endings simply because with your distorted ideas of time, beginnings and endings seem to be inseparable, valid events. As you learn to turn the focus of your attention away from physical reality, and therefore experience some slight evidence of other realities, your consciousness will cling to old ideas that make true explanations impossible for you to understand. Multidimensional awareness is available to you in your dreams, however, in some trance states, and often even beneath ordinary consciousness as you go about your day. This awareness gives personal experience with the multidimensional richness that exists not apart from, but intermingled with, within, through, and all about your physical world of sense. To say that physical life is not real is to deny that reality pervades all appearance and is a part of all appearance. In the same manner, God does not exist apart from or separate from physical reality, but exists within it and as a part of it, as he exists within and as a part of all other systems of existence.